beautiful souls. It's Marcia C. And this is Her Sacred Soul Space. On this episode, it's all about the herbs, the herbs, the herbs. And no, I'm not talking about the ganja herb. That will come on a different episode. <laughs> but honestly, soul seekers, this world has provided us with such great wonders in nature, right? And it is here to serve us in such a holistic way, whether it's through a physical manner or even a spiritual manner. And sometimes all it takes is just for an individual to bring it to our attention. Well, for me, that was my grand mother. Growing up in the country, we have a staple item like in Jamaica, you, every day you're always getting some bush tea. And trust me, you know, I have some favorites, you know, like pepper elder or even some lime leaf tea of which I would lo love to drink in the morning. But then we also have some of those herbs that leave that bitter taste in your mouth <laughs> that makes you just want to have a spoonful of sugar afterwards. But in the end, we all knew that it was good for us. Moreover, I didn't have any other choice but to take it, right? Um, so my grandmother was blind, so I became a herb retriever. She would call me and send me in the fields, and she was very specific as to what she needed. Marcia, bring me three leaves of this plant, two from this plant, and three from this other plant. And I always found it to be so fascinating that when I would get home and I would give it to her and she sat on her bed and even though she was blind, mind you, she just basically could see everything. She felt the leaves and just to ensure that I brought her the right leaves from the plant that she asked. And I enjoyed just watching her connecting with the leaves in such a beautiful way. She would... um place them on her head, position them in the right way. And then she would tie her head. And then uh, afterwards, she would just go off humming, humming as a way of connecting to the power and the energy of the herbs, knowing, believing, and realizing that the healing that she seek, that she desires, will re prevail from these herbs. You know, and even as an adult now, soul seekers, I find myself taking some of these herbs for granted, despite my upbringing. So I am indeed delighted to have Karima here on this episode with me. She is a herb, a spiritual herb practitioner, and she's here to share with us her knowledge, her wisdom, and insights on some herbs that we need to have within our home. Her general herbs uh, or herbs that you need if you're on a spiritual path, a spiritual journey, or even herbs uh, for those who have gone through a autoimmune disease such as breast cancer, right? So welcome, Karima. It's so, I'm so happy to have you. How are you? Greetings. I'm so thankful. Yes. Yes. And I'm so happy to have you here. Um, before we go in our discussions, I like to set the tone. And so to do that today, I am going to repeat a mantra that one of our previous practitioners shared with us. That is Sister Yaya. So as I repeat the mantra, I'm just going to ask you to get in a space of receiving, be in a space of you know, hoping that memories of herbs that you two may have been familiar with, but have gone, have not participated in in a while will come back to memory, okay? You can put your hand on your heart space and just close your eyes as I repeat this mantra. I call back my divine power and my divine strength back into the wholeness of who I am from this lifetime and all lifetimes, from this realm and all realms, from this dimension and all dimensions, so shall it be. I call back my divine power and my divine strength back into the wholeness of who I am from this lifetime and all lifetimes, from this realm and in all realms, from this dimension and in all dimensions, so shall it be. I call back my divine power and my divine strength back into the wholeness of who I am from this lifetime and all lifetimes, from this realm and in all realms, from this dimension and in all dimensions, so shall it be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Ah. Yes. Beautiful. 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 Welcome again, Karima. It's so happy to have you. You're here with me on Her Sacred Soul Space. And I am excited to learn to pick in your brain, as we will say back in Jamaica. I'm going to pick your brain so you can share with us your knowledge of some herbs that we need to get familiar with. But before we do so, can you share a little bit uh, with us about yourself? Well about me. Um, 
my walk with herbs, I would say, has been probably the first, it was probably the fir- one of the first things that pulled me into a lifestyle, a holistic lifestyle. Um, essentially, as a child, I was very connected to the plants. I spent a lot of time outside. Um, and in my being outdoors, I connected with plants. I connected with the leaves, the various shapes, the uh, you know the patterns, and that's somewhat drawn in. And in being drawn in, I spent a lot of time sitting with them, connecting with them, and feeling that they did have medicinal powers. Wow. Um, so how would you say that herbalism have enriched your life thus far? From the childhood to now as an adult, how would you say it has done so? Well, as a child, I did um, suffer from extreme uh, chronic asthma. Um, I'm sure a lot of that had to do with air quality, being in the city. And um, numbers were very high for uh asthma statistically in the area um, where I was born. And because of that, I spent a lot of summers going to the emergency room needing oxygen. Um, So around the age of about 10, 11, well, actually my first encounter, I had a cousin who said to me that uh, I remember I had an episode where I saw some parasites after using the bathroom and I was crying and upset. I was about seven or eight years old. And, you know, I, I mentioned it and I was really upset. And my cousin said to me, well, you know, you ate those Chinese spare ribs and <laughs> put our gas worms in it, you know. <laughs> so... At that point, I never touched any kind of, um, I was very cognizant and became almost terrified of pork uh, because I associated it with parasites. And then from there, my mother actually had a copy of, she had a, a, she was an avid reader, so she had so many books uh, on uh, um. Black history and a lot of books on health that tied in. So the two, uh, I used to love to read her book. So there was the mending of our history along with holistic health. And that was Dr. Africa's book, African Holistic Healing. So when I found his book on her shelf, I just became entrenched. So I was I was around 11 or 12 by that time. Wow, that's so impressive. So between that book and Queen of Fours Heal Myself and um, Dr. Ben and the Ice Papers, <laughs> Francis Cresswell saying, I, you know, I, I spent a lot of time um, kind of tying the two together. Right, right. Know, coming coming into the realization that our people were very rich with um, with knowledge. And then I found out um, in my early years that, I, you know, my parents, my father particularly, he would call me. He had his nicknames for me. And one of them was Aunt, and he was referring to his aunt, um, who was an herbalist. And then I came to find out that I had so many people in my family who practiced the same things that I was so interested in. Wow. Um, so it's been your lineage, you would say. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Herbalists, they were yogis and shaman practitioners in my family. And I realized everything had just come full circle. 
Um, so I'm so fascinated by the fact that at 11 years old, that you were being called to your purpose. Your soul was calling out to the plants and the energy of the plants and wanted you to have such a profound connection. Do you remember what plant resonated with your spirit when you were younger? If there were even, if there were one that you can name, then regardless of whenever you go outside, you have to go around it. You have to touch it or something. Do you remember what plant that was? Yes, I do. <laughs> Share with us. It was Presslane. Presslane? Purslane. Okay. And what's that for? What is it good for? Uh, Purslane is um, in the Spanish. Sometimes you'll go in the Mexican markets and you'll see it. It's a very succulent plant. Um, and that's what fascinated me was the fact that, you know, I grew up in New York and here you had this succulent, tropical looking, almost like a succulent cactus looking plant. They would grow up in the in the middle of a crack in the sidewalk. Wow. And it would be a tiny crack, and you have a whole bushel of this juicy herb. And it just amazed me. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then sometimes every now and then I would see one with flowers on it. Mm. Little yellow flowers. Ah. And I would just, that was, that was the move. So in, in the Mexican restaurants, uh, not restaurants, but the markets, you'll see it um, and you can purchase it. It's called Verdam Laga. Okay. Verdam Laga. Um, I do, I will have pictures that I will be able to send to you. Okay. So you can see it. Um, it's just so lovely. And then I remember when I found out it was edible and guess what it was good for. Wow. Asthma? Push, push, exactly. Wow. So It was oh. a mucolaginous plant that was soothing to the respiratory system. So that connection was a must. There was no way it would have been avoided. That is so beautiful because even just listen to you describe it, it shows the character. It's like, you know... You know, we always say where there's a will, there's a way. It's kind of like it, dis it, it display that, like through the cracks, I am going to spur up. I am going to be seen because others out there need me and need to know how I can be here to benefit. Um, so thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Let's let's start talking about some general herbs for those who are may not be so familiar with uh, herbalism or herbalist and wanted to incorporate that in their lifestyle, their their reaching out for a lifestyle change, yearning for a lifestyle change, what are some herbs that you would recommend for them to start with and the benefits of those herbs? Okay, so another favorite herb of mine that I noticed early on was chickweed. And the reason why is because I noticed that during the winter, you have all this snow, you can have a foot of snow if you clear that snow, you just might find a beautiful, bright green chickweed under all that coldness. Mm. I mean, looking like a spring plant. <laughs> just as green and vibrant in the winter. Wow. Yeah. So chickweed, I think, is one of those plants that we don't really hear a lot about. But, you know, herbalists, you'll find it in formulas. You'll find it in some formulas. But... I find it to be so powerful because it, it chills the body and it breaks down morbid matter. So those dead cells that just sit stagnant, it's one of those herbs that brings movement in the body and then moves out that stagnant dead toxins in the cell, bring it through the membranes and flush it out. And it's so good at it. It breaks down um, excess fats. It um, it boosts. It gives the liver bo a boost in its function. It purifies the blood, and it's one of the few herbs that has a direct effect on the lymphatic system. Mm, that's good. A lot of times we pay attention to purifying the blood, but there are things that we need to do in order to also invigorate the lymphatic system, being that it is such a crucial part of our immune system. Indeed. Indeed. Trust me, I could, from experience, after gone through breast cancer, so trust me, I understand that, and I totally concur. Um, 
Do you, okay, you were sharing somewhere. I didn't want to, <laughs> to interrupt. Oh, no, it's what, so good. I love the conversation. <laughs> what, um, so how would you describe that herb? Is it the leaves of it? Is it fuzzy or just so we could kind of envision what it would look like if we come yeah. across it? Okay, so it's a vine without being a vine. It's long, stringy stems with very fine leaves. Okay, and the flowers will be very tiny and either white or yellow. And sometimes they have a little pinkish hue, depending on how you look at it. Okay. And the color of flowers change, sometimes based on the soil that the plant is growing in, along with um, one of the other things I'd like to share is that it's very good to pay attention to what is growing in your own yard because herbs are alive and they're intuitive. They have intuition just like we do. They're beings. Therefore, they're going to resonate with the vibration and the frequency that you're carrying and they come to actually connect and fortify. Oh, I love that. I love how you just said it. It's just so soon. I, I grabbed my heart. I said, mm, I can see because I could feel it. And yes. I believe that with all my heart as well, because as I say, sometimes we don't know what we want. And because this, we are all, we are all connected, you know, it will show up to say, here I am. I'm here to serve you at this juncture of your journey. And us not realizing that we need this unless someone like yourself come and bring it to our attention and you'd be like, oh yeah, I have a bunch of that in my backyard. I didn't know what that was, <laughs> you know? So, okay, what else should we put down? Because this is interesting. What else do you think we should have in our toolbox as just a general, I want you to give me another one as a general herb for us to pay attention to and for us not to sleep on and their benefits. Oh, dandelion. And I'm mentioning them that are very simple and very unassuming. The ones that you can walk by, you can gather in your yard. If you can't go out and buy it, you can gather it. Just make sure you're gathering it in a clean place that has not been contaminated. Okay. Because herbs also come in to wasteland, contaminated soil, to rebalance the soil. So um, dandelion is another one. Both dandelion and chickweed can be eaten fresh. You do not have to cook them. You can eat the root, the vine, the flowers, the leaves. All pets are edible. And they're nourishing as well as cleansing. So I would say dandelion and chickweed are both herbs that you want to have. Another one that you'll find very abundantly in the summer is amaranth. What we call, what in Jamaica, you call it kadalu. Oh, because I've never heard of it. It has the fine seeds at the top and the leaves are very deep green because they're very rich in chlorophyll. Yes. You know, a lot of us, we go, we buy the chlorophyll in the store and add it to our water. You can also juice that plant and get a very rich concentration of chlorophyll and every mineral that you need. Mm-hmm. I do. The kalalu juice is really good. Um, add a little ginger, a little lime to it, fresh. and it's just fresh and so refreshing. Delicious. And not to, yeah, and not to mention, I, I mean, today I'm going to get some kalalu myself. I want to. I love steamed kalalu, and you know, I normally eat that. With, well, we could eat it with anything, actually, but yes. some, some boiled bananas, some boiled green bananas. Mm mm mm. You're making Burr. me hungry now. And want some kalalu juice? <laughs> I don't need the fresh food, please. So important right now. Yes. When he's a shitty. Yes, indeed. And that okay. sounds so good. Some boiled yeah. green banana and kalaloo. I have some kalaloo, well seasoned. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I remember like when I was started off my spiritual journey, one of the things that I, I wanted was to to get connected with a herb that would help me on that journey. It's me in my own head. I wanted, I wanted to to become one with my intuition, not to be afraid of it, not to think that it had um, more clarity. I knew where I was being called to and who I'm called to be and how I needed to show up. And I just needed the aid of something. And I was led to ask about what herb can I try or utilize while I'm on my spiritual journey? 
Um, I don't know if you ever heard of one that calls Search My Heart. It's one of those that grow only in Jamaica. Most people use it for cold or chest pain. But when I acquired it, it was for me to help on my spiritual journey, for me to be able to connect, have, be able to really? decipher, shift through the downloads that I'm receiving. And one of the things they pointed out was... Um, if your heart space is not clear or clean, if you drink that tea, it will actually come back up. It is not going to resonate with your body because that's oh. why it's called search my heart or search yes. my heart. Oh. Yeah. And so like when I go home, I always ask for that. I, for the past few times, I didn't. And recently my mom came up. I mean, for the past few times, I wasn't able to get it. But recently my mom came up and bought up some for me. And trust me, I've been uh, incorporating too as a part of my daily regimen, um, drinking some of that tea. So for those of us who are on their spiritual journey, um, I know there are other herbs out there that can aid with you on your journey. Um, what are some of the herbs that you have tried or would you recommend for those who are on their spiritual journey? Whether it's for protection, clarity, or when you're trying to do meditation to kind of help you to become one, and especially if meditation is new to you, um, are there some herbs that you would recommend? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to refer back to one that grows in our area all throughout, you know, pretty much the East Coast. Um, even though it's more abundant in the Northeast, you can find it here as well. Um, you'll find it in metaphysical stores, wrapped up in smudge sticks. Um, it's sold widely. It's called Magwort. Magwort, okay. I've that heard of it. Yes. So Magwort is very good for um, heightening ability, heightening psychic ability. Um, if there's something you need to know that you pray on it before you go to sleep, you put mugwort under your pillow. Um, and you just might get the answer depending on how open and clear you are. Mm -hmm. True. Um, when it comes to doing dream work, I do want to emphasize um, a couple of things that I've noticed. One, if you eat too late at night, they're not as clear and they're more disturbing. Yeah. So it's best not to have heavy food on your stomach. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is making sure that you are not lacking in B vitamins because then your brain doesn't quite have the power to pull those dreams all the way through to where you can remember them and act on them. Okay, that's good okay. to know. So you said B vitamins. B, B complex, B com yeah. Okay, okay. The complex is B, yeah. Okay. It's really important. Okay. So with mugworth, I know you mentioned us uh, putting it on our pillow. It's also a herb that we can utilize as a tea form, in a tea form? Absolutely. You can tea form, you can burn it, you can bathe with it. Um, in all forms, it can be used. Okay. And okay. I, I suggest you connect it's always good to connect uh, with the plant first. Um, before pulling, going, and yanking the plant up, you don't want to function yeah. that way. Yes. You know, approach you with respect. And yeah. it's always good. I like to leave something behind, you yep. know? That's the shaman way. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I and add which parts of it. If you see a whole tree, you can ask which leaves it wants to offer up to you. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I believe that. And I do that too whenever I'm out walking in the woods. Um, and even if it's just simply hugging a tree, I kind of like connect first. Like I'm led to hug you. Can I do that? You know, and I know to some people it's weird, but it's what's in my spirit that I'm led to do. And if I, if I find something on the ground or anything that I want to take, I do ask permission and I do leave something return as a way of saying, thank you so much for allowing me to be in this space and for sharing with me. Um, yes. so that is, that's really, really good to know. Um, so as you know, I've mentioned before the fact that um, as uh, someone who has gone through autoimmune disease, uh, for me, it was just breast cancer. And it's always good for us to 
kind of start gathering some herbs for us to have to utilize post breast cancer. And uh, for me, that's um, soursop leaves, not something that I normally would have participated in, but after breast cancer, it became my friend. It's something that I, I incorporated in my daily regimen as well. Whenever my mom is coming up, Outside of my asking for the regular banana chips and bun and cheese, all those little fun snacks that warms my heart from when I was a kid, it's a yeah. must that I'm asking for soursop leaf. And I just brew it, let it sit for a while, and then I pour it in a bottle and I put it in the fridge. I prefer mine cold, so it just go down versus, you know, sipping on it. Um, and of course, it's packed with such, such great benefits. We all know that because it's something now that is even more popular outside of the Caribbean or Africa, everybody is connected with, uh, trying to get connected with Sawasap, especially, like I said, if you've gone through breast cancer. So for my pink sisters out there, I would love for us to talk about certain herbs for us to have in our first aid kit. Like, what would you suggest for us to make sure if we don't do anything else, incorporate this herb in your lifestyle? Okay, so if I had to pick and choose one herb, it would be bitter melon. Mm. There has been a lot of research on bitter melon and how it stops um, the growth of those cells. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's pleasant, how it halts the growth. Okay. Um, and bitter melon is uh, abundant. You can find the leaves, you can find. Um, I know it doesn't naturally grow in this area. We would have to plant the seeds and grow them. And it looks like the bumby cucumber. Yeah. Um, grows on vines. Um, I have not seen it in real life, but I see the picture. I have the capsule that I take as well. Yeah, um, but, common. you know... That is not, I'm not going to lie. I do not do that on a regular basis. I do more of the soursop tea or juice mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Well, you said it. Soursop is definitely. A go-to, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely a go-to. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And I would say right behind that, that bitter melon would be right there. Because there's a lot of research on it as well. Do you actually, can you eat the melon itself? Like a oh, part yeah. of a salad yeah. and then the leaves for tea or something like that. Exactly. I've okay. juiced melon before. Oh, uh -huh. interesting. Okay, I'm going to have to look into it's that. It's bitter. It's bitter. It's, bitter. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's one of those that I talked about. You're going to need a teaspoon a, a spoon of sugar after. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But it's clean. It's clean in the blood. It's clean in the blood, you know, so, yeah. which is good, which is good. You know, we have a bush we call Circe. I'm not quite sure what's the other name for it here uh -huh. in other countries, but it's, we are bitters. We call it bitters. It's one of those teas uh -huh. that after we're done, man, everything still be bitter for like a good 15 minutes, you know? Oh, yeah. it's, it's really good because it clears our blood. And we always do that, like right before going to school as a way of cleansing our body and be, us to be energized and be alert and to be able to learn as, you know, as we go along on, on our school journey. So that's good. That's right. Now, I have heard mixed messages. I've gotten mixed messages. I've heard some people say bitter melon and Cersei are the same. I've heard others say they're not. I don't like to call it the same if I'm not absolutely sure. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's going to come down to that name. So... Yeah, I, I mean, now, you have me future. thinking now. I'm sitting here thinking. No, like, maybe I use interchangeably. I looked into it and I saw different things. And asking some of my herbalist colleagues, I've heard both, both okay. sides. I'm just looking at the picture of the melon. Mm -hmm. So unless, you know, it could be, uh, you know, as we say, they could be related. <laughs> they it could, could be. be. Really, yeah. It could be. It, it could I'm be. not sure, but yeah. I know that. There, there definitely is a lot of research on it, um, and it's been used in formulas to actually counteract. But one of the other things I want to mention that is so crucial, there are other areas aside from herbs. Um, one is movement. We don't really move our breasts enough. That movement is so key. We have to 
start to implement daily massage. Okay. Okay. Even like in certain dances, the serpentine movements require you to have to move. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that circulates and not allow anything to accumulate and become stagnant because the breast tissue is fat. So, so it tends to hold and accumulate waste. You've got your lymph glands right there underneath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, during certain times of the month, we might feel lumps under there. Yeah, yeah. It's good to put some castor oil. Castor oil massaging helps to dissolve that. Okay. Okay. It was heat. You add heat. I don't like to use electric heating pads because of the electromagnetic frequencies that are emitted from them. But I do like to use... um, the cherry pit um, heating pads that you put in the oven, heat it up. It doesn't stay as hot as long, but to me, it's a better move. Okay. Okay. Yeah, That's good. Do. That's a good tip. Thank you for sharing that because so along with our herbs for us to continue keeping the movement, a movement going movement on up top. And massage. Yeah. And a massage as we Lord. continue on our journey, regardless of what Lord. stage you are in because it will help to eliminate certain things. So especially when it comes to prevention. Yes. Yes. Particularly. Yes, indeed. And that's what and that's know? who I'm referring to or I'm, I'm speaking to. I am not here. We're not here to intervene in your um, recovery process. This is post breast cancer when you're in a space of what can I incorporate now in my daily lives? Um, and so these are just some of the tips that we can do. Uh, with the herbs and also the movements because they balance each other out because, you know, it makes no sense for us to be taking certain herbs when we, our body is just stagnant, you know, the movement That's has right. to, yeah, we That's need right. that movement so that even if it's just walking around, just so the frequency can flow, the energy vibration, all the place that are all tightened can get released. And then the herbs, the medicinal part of the herbs will now seep in, in those areas that is needed, you know? So That's, That's right. good. That's good. That's good. Thank you for reminding us of that. Along with the herbs. Yeah. Let's do the movement. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, heroin? Yes. And don't forget to touch your girls, you know? That's yes. Right. Like, I touch them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we like, um, one of the teachings, one of the, um, one of the uh, Montauk Chia teachings um, speaks about massaging the breast 33 times, um, going inward and outward. That's one of the Taoist teachings. That's beautiful. I mean, wow. For me, I'm I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm in absorbing mode right now, soul seekers. I'm like, I didn't know that. And I'm going to, I could see myself start doing that. So thank you. I'm just, I'm just absorbing all the knowledge. You know, when you think you're here to talk about one thing and spirit comes in and say, Hey, let's remind him of this as well, because together, if they do both together, they will see much of a great success. So this is some good, good, good information. So as we talked about herbs and I want us to kind of, and we mentioned uh, briefly certain approach that we take, you know, ask about what leaves can I take from your vine or, or what leaves from the tree. Um, and I'm pretty sure, you know, you have a way of even connected more probably with a purr before you connect with the herb or before you drink the tea or before you, you put it in your mouth to become one with it. Um, for our soul gem portion, I'm asking you for you to share that prayer with us so that for those who are looking for a prayer as well, for when they're about to get, become one with their herbs that they can utilize. Could you share that with us? Yes, I can. I can. I mean, usually I'll have a different one for the herbs and it'll come organically as I connect with it. I usually sing a song. <laughs> listen, now you see why I said my grandmother used to hum. Like, listen, when she yes. do all of that, she just started going there humming. And I was like, never knew what it was all about, but I was just fascinated and just watching her doing it. And now I know that's her connecting. So it all depends on the vibe you're saying? It depends on the vibe. Okay. It depends on the vibe. But the first thing I would do 
is, you know, you you are approaching the plant with your hands out. Mm. And you say, I give and I receive. Mm. I'm I, not here only to take. Let us feel this relationship of reciprocity. I enrich you as you enrich me. We create harmony, love, and beauty. I call on you to increase my wisdom. Show me your ways. Show me what you're about. And I connect with you and allow you to see me. See my heart. See my soul. See me on a soul level. I ask you, as we connect, to be my ally, and I shall be your ally. Accept my enrichment as I accept yours. And then at that point, we will move into whatever song or tune is coming to me about the beautiful being, this beautiful being that we've been gifted with. Yes. You're so beautiful. Oh my and gosh, Karina. Likewise. <laughs> oh God, that was such a beautiful prayer. And I know it's just, you're just going by what comes in your spirit. And it's just, sure. it's just the sincerity of it. You could sense you, you could, I could hear and feel the gratitude, the, I am open to you just as much as you're open to me. And I love that about it because it's not, it's no longer, I am doing this because my mama said this or my grandma said this or my auntie said it. It's, I am doing this because it's, it's, I am ready to become one with my healing. I'm yes. ready to become one with you. And I know you are here to serve me. Um, because as I said, you know, this world has so many wonders in nature. And if only we are privy to the knowledge for us to, to know so that we know how to embrace it. So I thank you for sharing that with us. Thank um, you. That really, really resonated with my soul, like oh, on all you. levels, you know, on all levels, really resonated with my soul. Well, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship. It's like we don't I always just ask for what we want. We got to give to so, um, you know, if you see plastic and stuff, you walking by the river, you're in the park, pick it up, throw it away. Maybe it's not yours. Somebody else left it. You know, that's part of that relationship. I know we can't all get rid of our cars and live in the woods. <laughs> However, little things that we do can make a difference. And make a difference. Yes, <laughs> indeed. I agree. I agree. Thank you once again, Karima, for showing up with such a ray of sunshine, with such knowledge, with such beauty. And um, that peace that you have within you. I thank you for sharing that with me and with my soul seekers out there. And I um, look forward to us connecting even more because soul seekers, we are actually going to do a workshop because Karima has so many other herbs that she wanted to share, but because of the time limits, you know, we had to cut it down a little bit. So we're going to create a space where you can join us and you'll be able to um, ask your questions, especially those who are breast cancer survivors i want to create that space for you and for me so look out for some more information to come where we're going to put that out so that we can get that done okay but until we meet again i just want to say remember see your light and be your light living intentional through experience one love and walk good one love and <laughs>